This is a nice example of an early 19th century English mahogany campaign chest. How do we know it's an earlier chest? Well, let's have a look at it and see what we can tell you about it. Well, firstly, the height is much lower than uh, the chest that we see from the second half of the 19th century. Secondly, the handle. We always look at the handles, they're a good indicator. Now, this is a nice early handle, and you can see it's quite different to the more common uh, rectangular handle with the cutout corners that you see. That's really quite a nice handle. Also, it's got carrying handles to the side, uh, good brass, strong carrying handles. So it was not made to go into a packing chest. And a lot of the earlier 19th century campaign chests were used without packing cases. It probably would have had an oil cloth or something like that lashed over it during travel. Packing cases didn't really come in until uh, towards the middle of the 19th century. So that's another good indicator. Got quite a nice um, panelled back, but we can see that something has gone on here. The bottom section um, to the back is quite different to the top section. Now, that's been replaced at some stage, but really quite some time ago. Um, it's possible that it was a running repair, perhaps done by the regiment's carpenter in the field. Uh, we don't know, maybe it was done later by a cabinet maker back home. But it certainly was done quite some time ago, but not original. The top half is certainly original. Now the quality of this chest really is very, very good. All of the screws on the handles are lined up and on the gilt brass strap work. So that's a nice sign of uh, quality, attention to detail taken by the cabinet maker. So let's have a closer look at this brass edging to the top of the campaign chest. Well, we spoke earlier about the quality of the um, the fixing of the brass straps and the drawers, how all of the screws were lined up on the rest of the chest. And this brass edging doesn't quite tie in with that. We can see that there's marks here where whoever fixed it has missed with their hammer, dents in the brass, um, different size nails which have been used and then cut down. Something has obviously gone on here. Well, there's quite a simple explanation, really. At some stage, this board of mahogany used for the top decided it was going to shrink. And this brass edging pulled against it. So something had to be done. The brass edging was removed um, and put back. And whoever put it back wasn't quite as skilled as the cabinet maker who originally made this piece. Again, perhaps it was done in the, in the field and maybe done in a rush without uh, the, equipment, the equipment that the, um, the cabinet maker uh, might have needed to do a good job. So you can see these dents here where he's missed with the hammer, but also they had to cut down the brass here because it was overhanging. And that's also just been turned over a little bit at the back. It would have protruded because the board had shrunk. So that's quite an interesting little aside to this chest and uh, is all part of its history. Now, we're quite lucky that this chest also gives us another indicator as to its early date. So let's remove the top half of the chest and have a look. Well, hopefully you can see there it says in uh, ink or paint, Lieutenant de Suarez Guernsey, painted onto the stained pine dividers. Let's put this back and see if we can uh, tell you a little bit about de Suarez. Well, you have another look at the chest and its lovely early handles. Well, the de Suarez 
uh, family were a very well known family in Guernsey and they supplied an awful lot of, uh, of soldiers and uh, naval captains throughout their history. Probably one of the earliest was Thomas um, de Suarez, who was appointed a captain in 1779 um, and taken prisoner at Yorktown in the American War of Independence and finally ended up as the inspector of the Guernsey militia. There were several other Suarez throughout the 19th um, century. Admiral James Suarez, first Baron de Suarez, he was an admiral of the three fleets at uh, one time or another. However, we think the most likely candidate from the family to have first purchased this chest was S.F. de Suarez, who became an ensign in the 74th Regiment in 1830. By 1834, he purchased his lieutenancy and by 1839 he'd become a captain. So that uh, gives us a five-year timeline for when he was a lieutenant in the 74th, and it's likely, of course, that he bought this chest during that period. By 1847 he's uh, still in the army list, but by 1848 he's no longer there, so we can presume that he would have retired at that stage. However, you probably spotted before when we turned it around these depository labels here and they are printed de Suarez as well and they're also marked with the Army and Navy Cooperative Store Limited. So at some time this chest was housed in a depository via the Army and Navy Store. Now we know that they didn't start until the 1870s so um, it's very likely that this chest was handed down from father to son, used by several generations of the de Suarez family. And uh, why not? It's a very good quality campaign chest and still very, very usable as a good piece of uh, campaign furniture today.